The vast percentage of our conceptual behavior is formed during the first 15 years of living. That is said by psychologists, not me. People are heavily marked as children and later on as teenagers when their parents talk them out of being a music producer and talk them into being an accountant. And children tend to believe their parents. The vast majority of parents convinced their kids that they need a steady source of income in order to have a secured life and thus become accepted members of the society. Which I must admit is more or less true. Teenagers are often nagged by abetment. But the burden becomes heavier when you hear people saying to you, find a real job work in a secure position. However, natural-born artists have this spontaneous lust to refuse to find a real job. Our archetypal duty as artists is to offer to the world something new, something unseen. An artist sees the world through a unique scope, right? Wrong. Every person sees the world through his unique own scope. There are as many worlds out there as the persons living in them. Artist is he who has the ability to drag others see through his artistic lens. So, when an artist's personal vision gets accepted by the local or even the global culture, then he becomes an established artist. One way of achieving that is by having control over your output. If you manage to control your productions by embracing feedback and other valuable strategies and understand yourself and figure out what kind of valuable procurement you are compatible with, you might be able to drag others to watch your content. Providing value through art is an extremely difficult thing to do. Just think about it. How the hell are you going to make someone's life better? by making music. You have to make him dance or at least make him feel something. Even worse, if you are a newcomer producing whatever bullshit you feel up to, how the hell are you going to make someone's life better? Let's just say that the words newcomer and value do not necessarily enlist on the same dictionary. However, With great effort, luck and experimentation, even a phenomenally inconceivable goal can be achieved on some degree. We consider ourselves artists. But what is art? If you ask me, I would say that art is the rearrangement of scattered, unformed matter in a way that provides value to others. You put energy decorating your room. You reorganize matter around you. You reduce the entropy of your room. The creative process includes making subjective order out of objective chaos. And yet, this particular process serves your own needs and thus is not art. Let's change the set of our example. You are now decorating a public hall and you still try to reorganize space around you, but now in a way that suits others. Now others will occupy and luxuriate that room. And thus now you are a decorator. Now we are talking about art. Art is a state of offering, not taking. Art is nothing but the fruition of creativity in a way that suits others, not yourself. And that powerful force that is impelling you to put some notes together, that force flows from within yourself. You can't just abandon it and go work for McDonald's. That would be a betrayal against your own nature. On the other hand, nature wants you to have children and be able to support them. And in that sense, getting a secured job is what your nature demands. But is that in fact what your nature truly demands? 
We are the ones who formed that kind of pattern in society. We are the ones who made the rules and said you have to work eight hours a day. We could have set the world to spin in different gears. This framework that we live in and work in was entirely developed by us. So how can this be our nature? When we talk about nature, we mean a million year evolution. Not the products of a society that has been formed the last 50 years. Is it wise to consider that kind of living as a natural thing? It seems that when you decide to work in a secured job, you choose to listen to the modern civilized way, but not to your natural instinct, which clearly indicates that you are an artist. And I think that is where it all starts and ends. The question is always this, what is more important to you? Will you be a wealthy family man with a steady income or will you be a starving artist? There are many humanitarians out there preaching that our lives, our kids are above everything. And I ask you, how can people believe that human life is above all after hundreds of thousands of years we spent dominating, hunting and torturing other animals. How can someone persist on believing that our lives deserve to be above all other creatures? The answer is usually because we have accomplished wonders and because the human brain is the most complex organ in the universe. It's the products of the most complex organ that we must preserve. Human organism is not above all. Our creations, our ideas are above all. Our achievements are above all. Art is above all. Music is above all. And thankfully, there were many humans throughout history that sacrificed their mortal state for their immortal way of thinking. 